Welcome to the secrets of highlighting. Most of my videos are on blonde hair. Most of my clientele is blonde. So I really feel like I have perfected the blonde shade and the blonde tips and tricks. So I just figured I would come on here and do a video talking about all the secrets that I feel like you need to know for highlighting. So number one would definitely be baby lights. I know baby lights is kind of a new term, but let's be honest, it's just a fancy term for a fine weave. And I feel like this is the best way to get lighter, brighter results in a more even color. If your highlights are chunkier or thicker, the bleach isn't going to penetrate them the same way it would thinner sections. So even if you are looking to be very, very blonde, I would just do baby lights tightly packed back to back so that you get the results you're looking for. Tip number two is treating the hairline differently than the rest of the head. So as you can see here, I already did her hairline and it's almost like she has a headband of foils around her face and hairline. And the reason for this is most blondes when they sit in your chair are going to say, I really like it bright around my face and when I pull my hair back, I wanna be able to see blonde and not roots. So I always do this and this A gives you the money piece that's so popular right now and B makes your clients feel like they are super bright around the face. So that way when their roots are growing in, they still feel brighter where they see it in the mirror right around their face. And you can do slices or highlighting if you're wanting that strong money piece look, which this client did. I usually do two to three back to back slices and then start baby lighting. So that whole headband around her hairline is basically slicing. And then if they want it a little softer, not necessarily a money piece, you could just do normal highlights, but focus them around the hairline. This is something that I do on most of my blondes, especially if they are like a darker blonde or a dirty blonde or even have dark hair wanting to brighten up. And it's tease out the ends after doing the highlights. So as you can see here, she's got a full head of highlights and I am just taking random subsections of the dropouts, teasing them to diffuse the line and then baby lighting that section and then putting lightener on it. This is just going to pop her ends out even more. I do it after I highlight that section so that they all foil or process evenly and I always do this just because it helps them feel like their ends are a little brighter that way it adds more depth in the root but then the ends are really bright which most pictures that they'll show you actually have that so as you can see here I'm just teasing baby lighting and then putting the lightener on and feathering it up into the tease you don't want to put the lightener on the teased part you just want to feather into it and sometimes I'll bump up the developer for this because sometimes it processes slower. Other times I just use the same developer I was using before. Like a broken soul in a wonderland without angels. That is how I feel when the mirror shows me strangers. Okay, when it comes to mixing lightener, consistency is key. I never ever mix more than a scoop or a scoop and a half at a time. If you mix more than that just because you're trying to get more product, it's going to get puffy and it's going to swell and be harder to work with. I like my lightener to be runny, not too runny where it's dripping out of the foil, but I like it to have a smooth consistency. So make sure you just do the consistency that you like, but don't mix up too much bleach. Okay, this is a tip that I've shared on pretty much all of my videos, but it is using a board to highlight, especially around the nape of the neck and around the ears. As we all know, heads are shaped round, and sometimes it's really hard to get the foil in there and get all the way to the hairline or to the root without it being a mess, especially if you have flimsier foils. So what I do is I take my board and I stack up about six or seven foils on the board, and then I just apply the lightener right there. And as you can see, it's so easy. I can get all the way up to the root. I can saturate the whole piece of hair very evenly and then I just take the foil, pull the board out, and fold it up like normal. And so I do this for about the first six or seven foils up the hair, and then we have a sturdy enough base with the highlights that we've already put in to not need the board anymore. So this is just something that I absolutely love. I get asked all the time where I got this specific board, and I actually got it from Habit Salon. Um, they specially make them for their Haircation members. I'm not sure if they're open to the public. I can find out for you guys, but I will also link a few other boards that I have used and really like as well. 
Okay, this is something that I for sure struggled with in school and it's something that I've come a long way with. So it is definitely getting close enough to the root without getting to the scalp. You wanna make sure you're touching up the roots in an efficient way, but you don't want it to be bleeding with tiger stripes. So I definitely get really close to the root. I use a bleach that doesn't swell too much but then I also avoid the scalp. So I wanted to show you guys right here. I actually did get some bleach on the scalp right here. So if that happens to you, go ahead and just wipe it clean. If you have any bleach that's extending above your foil, that's a no-no. So get as close to the scalp as you can without extending past the foil because if you do, you are going to have a tiger stripe and spotting right there. So as you can see, I just kind of barely tap the root and then sometimes I will feather in with my brush and that's the way that I like to do my highlights the most efficiently. And this one's pretty obvious, but it's something I still feel like I need to go over, and that is saturation is key. Make sure when you're doing your highlights that you saturate, saturate, saturate. You want to make sure that you're getting enough lightener on there to penetrate the cuticle and make sure that there's no unevenness or splotchiness, especially if you have thicker highlights, that can for sure happen. But I like to do baby lights just because it's easier to saturate, but see how I'm going over that end a lot? I know this is sped up so you can't really tell but I like to go over each section very carefully just to make sure I saturate and every single piece of that hair is getting covered. Pulling your foils tight and creating tension is so, so important. As you can see here, I tighten it really tight with my weave comb, and then I go in, and the whole time I'm doing this highlight, I'm holding her hair super, super tight. Then I fold my foil up, and then I re-tighten again underneath the foil. This is just going to create a very tight foil so that there's no slipping, no tiger stripes. And I actually once had a teacher in hair school tell me that if someone weaves her hair and it hurts, that's actually a good thing, and it means they're a good weaver. So definitely make sure that you're holding tension and making sure your foils are super tight. Okay, so this is just a little trick if you actually don't have a highlighting board. I take two foils and double them up back to back, and then I do that as my board. So since it's thicker with two foils, I put it in there and it gives me a sturdier base and gives me the effect of a board without actually having one. So then I just go in and do my highlight like normal, saturate, baby lights, you know the drill. And then afterwards, I'm going to take that second foil out and just fold up the one. So that's just a little trick if you don't have a board. You can stack two or three foils together to give you the appearance of having a board without actually having one. I always, always like to highlight on an angle. I don't like going straight up the head and doing patterns like that because the head is in a curved round shape and I feel like you need to follow that with your highlights. So as you can see here, I'm always highlighting on an angle meeting in the middle. And I feel like this just flows with the pattern of the hair better. It gives you a more natural result and it doesn't look stripey or boxy or anything like that. So I would definitely recommend highlighting on an angle because I do it every section of the hair. When you don't wake up next to me, you're me incomplete. I need you here tonight to cover up these empty sheets. Cause I'm incomplete. Okay, so this next secret is actually two in one. The first part of this secret is making sure the hair processes all the way. I think a lot of people get afraid to leave bleach on the hair for too long and they rinse it out before it's ready where it's still kind of yellowy or orangey. And it's true when you're doing a color correction or going lighter from darker that you can't get white in one day. But with her, she was just a dirty blonde. So I did feel like I could get to that white blonde in the foils, which we did. So even if you have like Olaplex on there, it does dilute the processing time. So make sure that you are giving the hair enough time to process even if the bleach is on the hair for 45 minutes to an hour as long as you used a low developer and you're watching the hair it should be okay so make sure you don't just rinse out after 20 minutes because you're scared and then the second tip is rinsing out the highlights as soon as they're done even if the rest of the hair isn't done so as you can see here I am just taking those pieces that are done in the front rinsing them out with my water bottle um, drying them down with a towel and yes it is time consuming and yes it sucks but this is what you have to do to keep her hair healthy her top was completely done so I rinsed it out I'm going to put it in an Olaplex treatment and let it sit while the back finishes up processing. Um, if I had started on her back section first, then I probably would have just dipped her head into the sink from the back and then done it that way. But since we started in the front, I feel like I just want to do it this way because there's no way I'm going to dip her head in the sink. <laughs> so as you can see here, I'm now putting that Olaplex on her ends and then I'm just going to twist it up. And this way it kills two birds with one stone. She's sitting in a treatment while the back of her hair finishes processing. Okay, this tip is something that I could go on and on about because it seriously has changed my highlighting game. 
So it's definitely important to tone the roots separately than the ends. And I feel like a lot of people get confused and think that when I'm doing this, I'm doing a root smudge or a root shadow, and that's not always the case. Yes, I do a lot of root smudging, and if I was doing a root smudge, it would be like level six or seven, but she still wants to be very blonde to the root. But even though she wants to be blonde to the root, I am still tapping out her base. The difference is I am using levels eights and nines when I do this. And this is just because the top of her hair lifted differently than the ends did, only because the top is virgin hair and or colored hair and the bottom is previously lightened. So I am using an 8NA and I'm just barely tapping out her roots. And I'm not even doing this to smudge it or shadow it. I'm doing it just to soften the line and to tone the roots differently than the ends because you do have to treat it differently. And this has seriously changed everything. I always sit my clients up, tea part them, tap their roots out, comb through. I let this one sit about five minutes and then I go ahead and lean her back and then I tone her ends. And this makes all the difference. It makes the colors way more vibrant, makes them blend better. Now, as you can see here, I am now tapping the money pieces. I leave those out when I'm doing the rest of the tap because I want the money pieces to be brighter. So the last one minute, I go around and tap the hairline and then I rinse out. And this is just going to make your money pieces really pop and stand out against the rest of the highlights. You can already see how beautiful this blend is going to be. I'm dying. I just can't wait. So as you can see here, the roots toned down just a little bit, but they're like a level eight, nine, still pretty bright and vibrant, especially her money pieces. And now I'm going to go through and tone her ends. And on her ends, I used a 9V, 9P, 9T from Redken Shades EQ. And I actually kept the root toner on and then I'm just toning the ends and I'm just going to mix it all together. Sometimes I actually comb them through together as well, but this just makes it so that each part of her hair is being toned the way it needs to and you have to make sure that you always 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 lift the client up and get the underneath part. I feel like that's something that a lot of people struggle with and I for sure struggled with it as well because it's really hard to get underneath the neck and people will forget that part and then you go to blow dry their hair and you can tell that it's untoned. So make sure that you sit your client up and just saturate every piece of hair that they have. color is now done. Look how beautiful it is. I'm going to lift it up and show you how soft the blend is inside of the hair. You can tell that toning the ends and the roots separately really does help. It looks so seamless and blended. I absolutely love it. No tiger stripes. It's just the most beautiful color and I love it. <laughs> so if you guys are interested in more videos like this where I just kind of share tips and tricks and secrets that I have, let me know. Thank you so much for watching you guys. Have a good day.